Hey everybody and welcome back to Noisy Works. In this video we are going to build this heated enclosure for 3D printers. I will be showing everything from the construction, the electronics, all my design stuff. I have two heaters in every chamber and I have these fancy sliding doors. Just like that. So <laughs> yeah, let's go! I took some measurements from my printer and I translated these on the floor. So I have a roughly idea on where I'm going to build this whole contraption. I was always inclined to make history, but I never really had the time. Spent my life living dangerously, never worried how I'm getting by. I'm out here working, trying to do what I can. I'm out here sweating, dripping blood from my hands. Doing what I'm good at. Just doing It's a uh, update time. So I forgot that I have to place ventilation over here, right in here, because I will have a sort of a pain boot behind me and uh, everything needs to be chopped off. So a lot of work done for, ah, uh, nothing. It's fixed. Let's continue. Everything is nice and secure, so now we are going to put in the shelves, then we are going to put on some sheeting on the outside, and I'm going to insulate the inside with something very special. This is gonna be it. In the middle we have the 3D printer. This is going to be a heated chamber so we can print ASA, ABS, maybe some PC, we will see. Then on the top will be the filament storage solution for things that get uh, moist. So there's going to be some drying involved. And in the below part, there's going to be the regular uh, storage. To close this all off, there are going to be some sliders and this will be the door. But the door will be cut into several pieces, so we can open each part separately. But that's not the only thing I did. I added two more tables and that's going to be for the Algo Jupiter, so subscribe for that one. To keep the heat inside the chamber, I have two types of insulation. The first one is more to fill up the gaps, and the second one, this kind of rubber, is to protect everything from burning down. But before we do it, I'm gonna test it. So this material doesn't claim to be fire resistant, but it's fire retardant. Uh, that doesn't look very promising. When I put a flame on it, it didn't burn when it started melting, which is not ideal. So that's why I have this. This is going to be the finishing top layer. Let's test this out. This also didn't catch fire, but immediately started melting. So for an extra safety feature, I'm gonna put in a smoke detector that is coupled to my Siemens logo, and that should turn everything off as soon as there's some kind of smoke.
And that's gonna be this thing. This is not your normal uh, smoke detector. This one has an output and this output I will be using to control my system over there. And that will power off all uh, electrics connected to the printer. So if there might be a electrical short or something like that, the system will turn everything off. And then it's just waiting to, uh, yeah, unburn itself. <laughs> We got the safety all sorted out and now it's time for some lighting. We're gonna add some lights here on the inside, right over here and right over there. And we're going to put some supports right over here and that's going to be for the doors. And then I have these plexiglass uh, inserts that will be for viewing inside of the printer. So let's do it. difficult to put in but it's ready let's turn it on nice next up we have these these are two 24 volt power supplies and they are going to power the LED strip inside of the enclosure and, and that's not all we have the uh, two heating elements to make the chamber of the printer heated so we can print ABS and whatever we want and we have these controllers and these are going to be set up in combination with the heaters so we can set a temperature we want not only in the printer chamber but in the chamber upstairs where all the filament will be stored why do i want to heat up my filament chamber fairly easy to keep out the moisture so let's mount this all on this board get it in the chamber and get everything wired up All right, gentlemen, it's time to power everything up. So I have one button right over here. And if I push this one, the whole setup will start. Let's do it. All right. So what do we have here? We have two controllers. This is the controller for the top side. This is the controller for the middle side. And as you can see, both fans are spinning. Now what should happen is when I reach the temperature I set up, let me sim simulate by turning it off, like that. The fan should stop spinning and the heating stopped. Now let's turn off the second one. All right, so both are stopped. Yep, this one is stopped. Now it's time to explain the electrics that I did downstairs. It looks fairly complicated, but it's all fairly easy. Let me explain. First of all, we have these two relays. This is the relay for the top side heater. This is the relay for the downside heater. The only uh, reason I have this relay in here, that's because the relays that are inside of the controller are too weak to power the uh, heaters. The heaters are about uh, 12 amps and the controller right over here only supports 10 amps. So if I do this too long, they will, uh, melt together and then you will have fire hazards so these two wires are coming from the controller just turning them on and off like they would do with the heaters so instead of turning on the heaters they are turning on these relays and these relays are turning on the heaters then we have the two power supplies these are our bus bars over here then we have the uh, positive side the negative side we have earth and we have incoming wall socket power Everything gets powered by this socket. This is the cable for my printer. And as you can see, I have finished everything off with some uh, aluminum tape like this.
Well, the door is decently flush. It opens really smooth. Oh yeah, cool. And I can see my display. Yeah, all right. Now let's look at it with the lights. Oh <laughs> yeah, buddy. Okay, two more to go. Let's go. I took off the feet so I have a nice seal with the foam down beneath and I give it a quick clean and now it's time to test it out. Now one quick thing I want to do is close off the vents on the side because all the ventilation will be downstairs when I hook up the fan but the fan is 12 volts so I have to put in a step down converter to get from 24 volts to 12 volts. So this is what I'm going to use to power up the fan. You go in with 24 volts in this case, you turn this little wheel until you have 12 volts and there you go. So this is the step down converter. We have the fan over here and if I did my job right, we got fan power. This is the exhaust fan of the uh, Sidewinder X1. This is going to provide cool air to the uh, drivers because the drivers are a problem. They get too hot when you print fast, so I uh, hope this will help it cool it down, so that doesn't happen anymore. Now the only thing I want to do is quiet down these power supplies, because even when the doors are closed, I can still hear them at the other side of my shop. This should be a good example of how loud it is. Okay, now let's insulate it. I took all the scraps, I've put them in here, I still have to do the ceiling, but for this moment, let's have a sound test. I think it's quieter. <laughs> All right, we have everything set to test. I've put in the heater right here. I'm still making a bracket to mount it permanently, but at this time and moment, let's have a little test, shall we? Preheat the bed and turn on the heater, for, uh, the chamber heater. Voila, it's turned on. And now let's have a look how long it takes to reach 40 degrees Celsius. I'm going to clean the window after all the uh, static is out of it. The fan switched off in about this many minutes. Now let's start first with a perch. And now let's start a print. This is the sound you will get in this enclosure. And I think it's pretty good. <laughs> it's almost silent. The most noisy thing is the fans inside here and this fan uh, smacked again against the glass. But that will be fixed once I have the holders, which I'm printing right now. 
Now the last thing I'm going to do on this video is permanently mount this heating fan using this bracket right over here. Last test to see if it works. There we go. I think that this is a nice solution to put in the heaters. This was a huge project and I enjoyed every minute of it. I hope you did too. If you did, give me some thumbs up, let me know in the comments what I did so good and subscribe to the channel. I really would love to get you the 1000 subscriber mark. So this is gonna be it. Thank you for watching and guys, I see you in the next one.